Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today. This is the first of our four part series in mastering Octopart. My name is Melissa Velasek. I am our Director of Business Development at Octopart, and I'll be hosting our session today. A little background on myself I am a graduate of the University of Colorado Engineering of a College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. So I first started interacting with Octopart when I was in university learning on how to design electronic components. I then moved my career into electronic component distribution and design, working to attach um, procurement opportunities to those engineering professionals in distribution. And for the last four years, I've worked at Octopart to connect our user base and partners to ensure that we're meeting needs for engineers and design and procurement professionals with the inventory availability across the market. So I'm really excited and honored that I get to present to you guys today. And thank you so much for joining us. This is the first of our four part series webinar and we will be continuing with one webinar a month in through the end of February. Today, we're going to talk about how to interact with Octopart in the most efficient way possible, whether you have worked with Octopart for a long time or newly discovered the amazing uh, data available on octopart.com. We hope that you'll learn something new today in order to engage with Octopart in a more efficient way. On December 20th, we'll be doing our second part of this series where we'll dive into advanced search functions will help you learn how to search by parametric information, setting filters, and even using comparison tools. On January 25th, we'll dive into part three, where we will share more about personalization, both setting up personalization as a registered user on octopart.com, as well as learning how to use the data available on Octopart in a native integration to help increase efficiency for your teams. And then on February 22nd, we will wrap up with our fourth webinar series where we will dive into the bomb tool on octopart.com, how to use it, how to leverage it, and how to increase efficiencies for your teams. If you have questions throughout today's presentation, please feel free to enter them into the chat. We're gonna save all the questions until the end, but we'll be happy to answer them. Please feel free to use the chat functionality. So with that, we'll dive into today's presentation. We're gonna start with an introduction. Who are we at Octopart? What do we do? And why do we think our data is the best in the industry? We'll hop over to octopart.com and give you a brief overview of the homepage and ways to use the website. We'll do a basic search and we'll also dive into the search results pages and the part detail pages, the data that's available on them and how to best leverage each page. Then we'll dive into a Q&A. So again, feel free to ask questions throughout. We'll answer them all at the end. At Octopart, we work diligently with thousands of suppliers of data, both component manufacturers and distributors, to source the most accurate and up-to-date data in the industry. We have more than 74 million active components listed on our website and work to ensure that there's mutually beneficial opportunities for engineers and procurement professionals to research, learn about parts, and find what they're looking for within the industry. We work at the end of everything to help avoid costly mistakes for both procurement professionals and design engineers by ensuring that they have quality data at the time that they're making decisions. That's what we are all about at Octopart. Last year, um, well, I guess this year is still going, but in the last year, we've added nearly 9 million new part numbers to the website. So we're constantly working to update the data and ensure that everything we're representing is accurate and at the forefront of the decisions that engineers and procurement professionals like yourselves are having to make every day. Taking a quicker dive into the scope of Octopart data, because I think this is really where the benefit of Octopart plays in, and that is that we have thousands of partners across the industry feeding us data that we work to normalize. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. But over 74 million components with active listings on our website were trusted by millions of users across the industry to help find parts, make design decisions, download data sheets and CAD models, research alternatives, and ultimately click on offers and go to a distributor website for procurement. 
Our job, again, is to create connections in the industry to allow for users to have a very streamlined access to all of the data in one spot without having to have so many browsers and so many ways to go search. At the backbone of everything we do is data normalization. I remember the first time that I found Octopart when I was in college, as I mentioned before, I had been researching how to buy a specific component that I needed for one of my design projects. And every single website that I went to, the nomenclature was slightly different. Some of them had spaces, some of them had dashes, some of them had an abbreviated component manufacturer name. And the amount of time that I spent trying to figure out if this part on this website was the same as this part on this website was aggravating to say the least. And so data normalization allows users on octopart.com to see match data from thousands of sources with one single unified output. We take all of the data in from distributors and manufacturers. We churn that to ensure that we are representing all parts that are matches, whether the name, as you can see on the example on the screen, is TE Deutsch or TE Connectivity Deutsch or just Deutsch. We represent that as a single part number because those are all equivalent in our industry. You don't have to have the industry expertise to distill that into a singular part number. We will do that for you. That's one of the great things about Octopart. Another thing that we're really known for in the industry is our best in class search engine. On the screen, there are components listed that we think make up a great search experience. So whether you're searching by a full or partial part number because you already have your list that you need to purchase from and you're just working down that list to make buying decisions, or you wanna search by part specification. You haven't narrowed down the part number or the brand yet, but you know what you need that part to do or the tolerances that you need it to exist within. You can search any of those ways on octopart.com and get a really seamless search experience. In the same way that we normalize incoming data to give one output, we also normalize our units so that when you're searching, whether you're searching by decimal place or fraction, by abbreviated unit or full spelled out unit, you're gonna get the same search results, which makes Octopart really easy to use. Our goal is to help you find what you are looking for and ultimately increase efficiency. So with that, we are going to hop over to octopart.com. We're all joining from around the world, so if you want, you're welcome to pull up octopart.com and follow along, but you can also just continue to watch on my screen. If you have questions as we go throughout this demo, please feel free to put them in chat. So we've landed on octopart.com's homepage. I think everyone who has come to octopart.com before is probably super familiar with the search bar. Like I said before, we are going to dive into advanced searching on December 20th. So we'll dive into ways that you can leverage the search bar, ways that you can search and how to make it feel a little bit more advanced to the outputs that you want. So we won't spend too much time on search today, but I am going to start by taking us down the um, homepage. So if you scroll down, the first subsection you're going to hit is category. These are all of our level one categories, the least granular of the categories. And you can click into any of these categories to see the level two categories, as well as the component manufacturers with parts for this category. Once you've clicked into any page on octopart.com, you can always access the category list here. And after you hover in the level one categories, the level two and level three categories will also show. But if I navigate us back to the homepage and I scroll back down, in the right corner, there's this view all categories button. You can also click on this to access our level one, level two and level three category information. Again, if you've narrowed down the type of product you need, but you haven't selected a component manufacturer brand or part number, this can be a great way to start your search. Back on the homepage, if I scroll down below the category section, I arrive at the distributor and manufacturer sections. Again, you can click into the tiles on the homepage to look at offers from those specific distributors or parts from those specific manufacturers, but you can also click into the view all distributors and or view all manufacturers to see an alphabetical list of all the partners that we work with. 
at the top, I can also navigate between categories, distributors, and manufacturers. And again, they're listed categorically uh, based on alphabetical order. If I navigate us back to the home page to scroll down to the last section, we see highlights from the Pulse. The Pulse is our content library that shows thought leadership, new product introductions, um, trend data, and analysis. You can also navigate to the Pulse at the top of the home screen. You can click on the Pulse and it will take you to, again, our content library. Back at the home page, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, past the categories, distributors, manufacturers, and Pulse, you can sign up for our newsletter, learn more about octopart.com, uh, job opportunities within our team, et cetera. I'm going to scroll us back up to the top, though I don't need to because this header follows us as we scroll to give you a quick introduction to some of the top of the page navigation. You can click into your account settings at any time by clicking on your name if you're a registered user and clicking on my account. If you're not a registered user, you can sign up for a free account at any time. It just gives you a little bit more functionality. A few things that we will hit on later in the presentation, one of them is the watch list. So we'll come back to the watch list when we navigate to the part detail pages. But I did want to point it out here as one of the benefits of being a registered user. You can look at items that have been added to your watch list. You can also navigate to the bomb tool. And because I'm a registered user, I can also access my, my saved bombs. We will cover more of this personalization on our session on January 25th, where we'll also dive into the Octopart API, where you can leverage the data set available on octopart.com and integrate it into your environment where you're making purchasing or design decisions. Again, we'll cover both the account settings and the API on January 25th. I'm going to navigate us now at the top to the bomb tool. The bomb tool will have its own dedicated session on February 22nd. And as I mentioned before, because I am a registered user, I can see my previously saved bombs and use the machine learning algorithm to upload bombs or create a new bomb. While accessing saved bombs is a feature for registered users only, anybody can access the new bombs or uploading bombs and navigating through the bomb tool. With that, I'm going to take us into a search example. I'm going to search on a Cortex for MF4, M4F, excuse me. Because I've narrowed down a part family of parts that I want, but I haven't really made a decision on the specific part number. This is an example of, again, searching more broadly. When I land on the search results page, I can see all of the parts that were a match to the query or search that was just made. I can also see the subcategory related to the parts that I've selected. If I move over all the way to the right of the screen, I can show filters and toggle this to be on. And this will allow me to look at the distributors and manufacturers related to this search the number of parts associated with either offers from that distributor available for purchase or parts that meet this search criteria from the manufacturer. And as I scroll all the way over to the right, I can filter on all of the technical specification data for the parts that were a match on this query. As I scroll down, I can toggle this off to bring um, the search results parts higher into my view. I can search by uh, sort, excuse me, my search results by relevance, availability, and I can also set my currency here. If you have a uh, logged in registered user account, you can also set your currency preference in your account settings. So you don't need to reset your currency settings on the search results landing pages. One important thing to note about the availability is that you can sort um, between all availability and just in-stock offers. This will not sort all of the offers in the offer table with the price and availability, but rather will allow you to look at parts that have in-stock offers, any in-stock offers, and filter out the parts or search, move to the bottom of the search results, the NPNs and the part numbers that don't have any availability from any partners. Most people who land on the search results pages on octopart.com use the price and availability tab, but we also have another view for looking at search results. 
if I click into part specifications, I can see those same parts that were in the search results, but now I can view a more technically granular data output where I can look at the data sheet and CAD models associated with those parts, as well as the market data, supply chain data, and technical specifications. This is a great way to look at, at our search results. If you haven't made a technical decision on which part number would be the best match, so I had done a, a, a family of parts, a, a technology keyword in my search results here. So this is nice because now I can cross compare some of the technical specifications to help me make a more specific part number decision. If we head back over to the price and availability tab, I can now look at more supply chain data related to these part numbers. We have uh, alternate data that you can use to compare alternates to the first search results um, that you're seeing here. This ties part number to part number for alternate data. I can also, from the search results page, access technical data like CAD models, um, 3D footprints, schematics, data sheets. I can add this to a bill of material that I'm already working on. I can also navigate to the component manufacturer page. So I could go directly to the Texas Instruments website by clicking on the manufacturer page. Within the price and availability table we see below, we have some subsections that allow to make an informed decision based on the type of um, distribution brand that you're working with. So we have these colored stars to help you differentiate between authorized distributors non-authorized distributors, and on the part detail page, we also include non-authorized dealers. If you would like to learn more about the different classifications and how we differentiate between them, at any time you can click on any of these star icons, it will take you to a page where you can learn more about the three different classifications we have for our distribution partners. Navigating back to the search results page, I can click show all as I previously had to expand to show all of the authorized and non-authorized stocking distributor offers. I can see the SKU associated with that specific distributor as well as the inventory level, minimum order quantity required to place an order at that partner, the packaging type, and different price breaks for different quantities. Lastly, in this table, we can see the last time that this data was updated. So if you ever have questions on how fresh the data showing in this table is, you can look over all the way at the right of the table to see the last time that this data set was updated. Now we will navigate into the part detail page by clicking on the part number. At the very top of the part detail page, we have this navigation pane that will allow you to click. This also is sticky, so it'll stay with you as you scroll throughout, but it'll allow you to more seamlessly navigate through the part detail page, clicking into areas that are of the most interest for you. As we look down, we can see that we can, again, similar to the search results page, add this to a bill material, navigate to the distributor or the manufacturer page and access the data sheet. We can also see the alternate parts associated with this specific manufacturer part number. For non-registered users, you'll see the first alternate result. For registered users, you can click on this and it'll take you down lower in the table where you can look at the full list of alternate part numbers. Again, this can be navigated to by looking at alternate parts in the sticky header. As I go back up to the top of the table, there is a functionality called the watch button. This allows you to set a selection for notification if quantities at certain distributors for this part number fall above or below a certain quantity. So let's say this is a part that's very important to my purchasing and I need to ensure that there will be future availability. I can set a notification to say notify me when the stock is below a certain quantity and I can say below 100 units at these distributors. If the distributors of your choice are not available in this list, you can hit edit to view a, a more robust list. Um, and then you can make your selections. If you wanted to look at everybody, you could keep all of those checks checked. And then when you hit save to watch list, it will save this to your account settings. Now that I've saved this to my watch list, it says watching. And every time I visit this part detail page, it will remind me that I'm watching these quantities. If I wanted to also look at the other parts that I was watching, I could navigate back into my account. 
I could go to my watch list and I could look at all the parts for which I was viewing um, and watching for certain notifications. We'll send you an email notification anytime that those fall above or below a certain threshold. Now that we are in the part detail page, we have three classifications of price and inventory showing. Again, the stars are the way that we can differentiate between those offers. And as we scroll down, we can see offers from different types of distributors. Some of our distributors also have an RFQ button. You can click on the RFQ button and I'm gonna open it on a different tab. Oh, and that didn't work. Sorry, love live demos. You can open this, it will send you to a new page where you can fill out a form and submit a request for a quote. It will be emailed directly to this distributor. As we scroll down, we can see inventory history. For registered users, you will see both a three month and one year view. If you're an unregistered user, you will see three months of inventory history. Scrolling down the page more, we can access CAD models, symbols, footprints, and 3D models from different sources through which we work to source CAD models. The alternate parts, which we navigated to towards the beginning of this page um, by clicking on the alternate parts that were at the header, we can also view compliance data, supply chain data, and technical specifications mapped to this particular part number. And as we scroll down further, we can see documents like technical drawings, data sheets, and descriptions, as well as the source of that document and when it was last updated. This concludes our demonstration. So I'm going to head back into our presentation. As a reminder, on December 20th, we'll be doing our second part of this series where we'll go through more advanced search techniques. We'll go back onto octopart.com and show you best practices for taking broad searches and narrowing them down to help make informed decisions on design and purchasing. And with that, we are going to head over to the Q&A session. Adrian Lieberman is going to be joining me on audio to help um, with some of the questions. So Adrian, welcome. Do you have any questions? Yes, looks yeah. like we do have a couple questions. Um, so, uh, the first question is, um, it reads, uh, how current is your data at Octopart? It's a great question. And I'm going to actually go back over to the website to help answer this question. So every, we are processing hundreds of millions of line items every day. Probably the most important data set for purchasing is the decision for, um, whether or not something that says it's available is truly available, technical specification data doesn't change. So once we receive technical data, like we can see here, um, this data is static. Once a part is formed, the data associated with it is it not going to change. So this data is fresh in the fact that it's always current and never changing. The price and inventory table is less static, very dynamic based on changing market conditions. And each distributor offer will have an updated timestamp next to when that offer was last updated so that you can tell how, how current that data is. Um, the next question, says, um, I'm a buyer in procurement and I want to know anytime something on my list falls below a certain number of availability, how do I do that? Yeah, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. So that's where this watch function comes in. Um, some people we've seen use this kind of broadly, like we wanna know all availability, but again, you will receive an email notification anytime, um, any distributor that you have selected for the watch list falls above or below the threshold that you sent. So you can set this to say, notify me if um, any offers, by checking all of the boxes, any offers go above because I need to buy 100 of these. If anybody has availability of 100 of these, please email notify me. Or if there's a specific distributor that you're currently purchasing from, and you have concerns that you won't be able to buy this part in the future, you could say notify me if it is below 
a 100 or however many you might need. And then you can come in here and edit it to say, you know, I'm today I'm buying it from Mauser. So I just need to know if public availability goes below 100 for Mauser so that I can go make a purchase. And again, you can make that configuration by setting save the watch list. And then you'll receive an email notification for this specific watch that you've set to the email address that you use to register for your free OctoPart account. Great. Um, the next question um, reads, um, I someone missed um, your instructions on the different color stars and what they mean, green and yellow. Can you do a quick review of that? Absolutely. So if at any time you want to learn more about this or read more granularly, if you're on octopart.com, you can hover over those stars and click and it will take you to a page where you can read in more detail about each of the three classifications. But at a high level, those distributors with the green stars next to them are authorized distributors, meaning that they have entered into a contractual franchise agreement between the component manufacturer that makes the part and this distributor. So they have a contractual agreement. The yellow stars are non-authorized stocking distributors. These are distributors that though they don't have a contractual agreement with the component manufacturer are sitting on inventory. So they have inventory on hand to support the purchasing and immediate turnover of that inventory. And an authorized dealer or non-authorized dealer, excuse me, um, neither have those franchise agreements nor inventory in place, but their expertise comes in to help search the world and find hard to find parts or obsolete parts or parts that really no other companies can get their hands on. So there are inherent benefits and risks to engaging with each of these distributors. Our goal is to help um, those who come to our website make informed decisions about, again, the benefits and the risks associated with any and all distributors so that they can get the parts that they need while also being informed about where they may be getting them from. Awesome. Um, we have time for just a few more questions. So I'm gonna ask uh, the two that we have here. Um, do distributors like the ones you listed on your site also have access to the API for product data? Great question. Yes, they can access our API for product data. It is imperative to us that we are good stewards of the data entrusted with us. So we never share competitor data between distributors or between component manufacturers. But if distributor partners do want to build out more robust websites um, or allow for cross comparison of different part numbers, we do allow distribution partners to leverage our API to enhance their website. Um, the same search capabilities on octopart.com are also available through our API for implementation into other websites. Great, great. Um, and the last question we have here, I think we have time for just one more, is as a distributor, can we have our manufacturers send you cross-reference and alternate part data for their parts? Absolutely. Our goal at Octopart is to have a robust offering of all technical data. So yes, if component manufacturers have part data, cross-reference data, or information that we can use to help users find what they're looking for when procurement professionals or designers are coming to our site and wanting to learn more, our goal is to get data in front of them and help them make informed decisions. So yes, absolutely. A few of these questions, Adrienne, I feel like had um, maybe some potential follow-up discussions, so I'll, I'll plug it here. If there are other questions that we didn't get to on today's session or things that you want to talk about in more depth with our team, please feel free to email us at any time at contact at octopart.com. And thank you all so much for joining today's session. Just a reminder, December 20th, we'll have our second of our four-part series, and we look forward to seeing you all there.